All right, hello everybody, welcome to another video. It's been a little bit of time since I've done any kind of non-Overwatch League related video. I did a little beta video um, a few weeks ago, but I figured now, while we're waiting for that LA Valiant roster to be announced, I figured I would do a little bit of a news update um, to talk about some of this stuff that we got talked about a little bit last week, or two weeks ago now, uh, during the dev um, update stream thing. And also look at this article from Yiska from GG Recon, kind of talking about the abilities um, that uh, have been leaked uh, for Sojourn, Arisa, and Doomfist uh, in the alpha. There's a lot of things to talk about, obviously, outside of just this. Um, I'm kind of playing catch-up right now, so I apologize for being behind as much as I am, but um, I want to get those roster breakdowns out, and I've been kind of busy, so I'm just not getting time to talk about this, so bear with me. We're going to get some content going, though. My goal is to kind of get as much um, out over the next few weeks while we are waiting uh, for some of these things to finish up, uh, and I'll get some more videos out. So for now, let's talk about this. Now, this article came out before the uh, dev live stream happened, where they confirmed the Doomfist's move to tank and some of the Arisa changes. I didn't really say exactly what they were. Um, they just kind of said that Arisa would be changing, and they made some teases and some kind of um, news and announcement about it. But Yiska's article details exactly what the hero's abilities are, and I figured I would go through and talk about them because I think it's interesting, um, and kind of talk about a little bit, try to equate how it might um, affect the Overwatch League and certain kinds of things I think will be interesting uh, based on it. So, this article comes from Yiska. Those who don't know, Yiska, very good reporter um, for the Overwatch League, or an, an Overwatch in general, so um, that is what you should look at. So I want to start with this first uh, bit here, which I think is actually very important, which I want to um, kind of talk about. So, Yiska says that GG Recon has talked with several sources who have had access to the closed alpha test of Overwatch 2's PvP mode, and due to these parties um, having signed NDAs, they have requested an anonymity. Um, the second paragraph, though, is the big one. Several sources have shared that the gameplay experience has held steady to Overwatch's profile while encountering noticeably fewer shields. The majority of sources that describe the noticeable change in how the game plays have pointed out the tank role to have been most affected, in line with the sea change that Overwatch 2 has brought to that role. So the tank role feels the most impacted um, because it is the most impacted, um, but that the game still feels like Overwatch. It doesn't feel like a, a dramatic shift away from Overwatch. The game still feels like what Overwatch is and has been in the 6v6 Overwatch 1 world uh, still feels that way in Overwatch 2. Now, I don't think this is mentioned in this article at all, um, but during the, the dev live stream, they mentioned the fact that a lot of the feedback they'd gotten was that supports did not feel very good. Um, or the supports kind of were really, really, really struggling. They were kind of dive targets a lot. Um, and I know there were some people who kind of looked at that and said, yeah, obviously we all knew that would be the case. Uh, so maybe that role is affected in that way as well. But it definitely feels like uh, the game is moving to a point where DPS is way more fun to play, way more high impactful, uh, or way more impactful and having high impact. And support looks like it may not be as interesting. It may not be as, ways, as many ways to protect yourself if you are a support. So... Um, It'll be interesting to see um, if they continue doing that. So first, we have the bit here about Doom... Uh, sorry, Sojourn, not Doomfist. Sojourn. Um, Yiska saying, Almost universally, sources agree that Sojourn has left a strong first impression and is likely overtuned. Um, that is seemingly what has been said uh, by the devs as well. Sources have advised that she will need to be adjusted down a notch as she currently ditches out an oppressive amount of damage through her railgun ability, allowing her to one-shot headshot 200 HP targets and her disruptor shot, a grenade-like field that also slows enemies in an area around it. Her power slide ability has both horizontal and vertical movement and is on a five-second cooldown. In practice, it apparently plays like an improved and more fluid version of Batiste's Exo Boost. So... A lot of the comparison I've kind of seen is that Sojourn feels like an Apex type of character, Apex Legends, where you slide and you can kind of go up walls and stuff like that. So, interesting. I think that from what I remember about the way the Railgun works is the Railgun charges up as you do damage with your primary fire. I think the Railgun is your secondary fire, and you build up charge with it, probably some passively over time, but more by using your uh, primary fire. You probably build up more charge over time. 
Um, that's my recollection. I could be wrong, but that's what I remember how it worked based on the limited stuff we've seen so far. So Sojourn does seem like an interesting hero. Um, definitely interested to see how she is played in the Overwatch League. If she's a hitscan hero, which I believe she is, um, I think the first um, tournament, which I think is not the main melee anymore. I don't remember what it's called. Um, but I think that tournament will probably have a lot of Sojourn. It'll be interesting to see. I'm excited to see Sojourn. I was excited when Echo first came into the league and we saw Echo a lot at the beginning. And then I'm hoping we see Sojourn again too. Just kind of that new hero syndrome I think is really, really nice when a new hero comes out, that that hero gets played a lot. Because then you figure it out. If a hero's bad when they come out, I feel like it's the type of thing where you never really get to see that hero played. Like, we never saw Ash for a while. Um, Ana, I think when she was first added, was pretty bad. So, I hope we see a lot of Sojourn, because I think Sojourn's cool. Her, her kit sounds cool. And, like, I hear this, I want to play Sojourn, which I think is important. Like, I actually want to play Sojourn um, and get my hands on her and see what she's like, because I just think she sounds like such an interesting hero, uh, based on what we've heard so far. Moving on next, we have Arisa. Now, Arisa, her kit is changing a lot. Uh, based on this report. So as we can see here, Arisa's kit has changed significantly. Of her previous kit, she only keeps her Fortify ability, which now also gives her additional HP. So no more Supercharger um, as an ultimate, no more Halt, and no more um, Shield. All those are gone, right? She's received three new abilities, and her Halt, Supercharger, and Protective Barrier have been removed. Instead, she has received a new ability called Energy Spear. So I'm going to guess this is her... Um, I don't even know which one this is. Um, but it's a new ability called Energy Spear, a javelin which knocks opponents back upon hit and deals additional damage when showing them into a wall. And her new E ability, Spear Spin... Destroys projectiles in front of Arisa, giving her additional movement speed and pushes enemies out of the way. Um, so Energy Spear, I get the feeling that's probably a... I don't even know, because she only has a Shift, and E, and her Ultimate currently. So I don't know exactly what button it would be. Could be a, you know, she if she still has Fortify, that's presumably still her Shift ability. So who knows what... It could be, could be like a right-click ability, it could be, uh, who knows uh, exactly what it is, but it could be an F ability. If I had to guess, right-click could be what it is, um, just on cooldown, but I don't really know. But the Spear Spin sounds a lot like um, it functions the way that Defense Matrix and Kinetic Grasp work, where um, it kind of eats projectiles in a way. Um, now, it says specifically projectiles. It doesn't say anything about hitscan. I imagine that is still affected by it. I'd be surprised if you could just shoot through it with hitscan, but everything else didn't. So my guess is it, it does destroy both. Um, but maybe it is only projectiles. Um, maybe regular shots can get through. I don't know. Interesting. But also gives her additional movement speed and pushes enemies out of the way, uh, which makes me kind of, you know, reminds me of the... Uh, playtest uh, or the the workshop mode we saw from all those kind of trials people were doing or Arisa had that like weird ability seems like maybe it was kind of a uh, an iteration of this ability uh, somewhat so those abilities sound interesting but finally her new ultimate Terra Lance pulls opponents towards Arisa in a large radius reducing damage taken to her as she becomes immune to crowd control effects and channels the ability the longer the ability is channeled, the more damage is dealt. Now, I don't know what it means necessarily by pulls opponents towards Arisa in a large radius. Is it something like there's like this anchor point and anybody within that radius gets pulled close to it? Is it something where the lance shoots out and like she spins it? I don't know exactly how it works. It's, it's not clear based on this. And when it says the ability is channeled, and the longer it's channeled, the more damage is dealt, how do you unchannel it? She's immune to CC, so clearly she's not going to get CC'd. But is it like if you just kill her, obviously? or I don't know exactly how it works, but it seems interesting, and it seems like something that makes me want to actually give Arisa a try. I have not seen Arisa in action yet in Overwatch 2. None of us have. So I would love 
to see uh, Arisa in action. And I would love to give her a try because this sounds like a really interesting kit and a very different direction for Arisa. I've never been a fan of Arisa. Arisa's, in my opinion, one of the most boring heroes to play. Um, and so I think this sounds really exciting, really interesting, and a really fun change to a hero that, for me, has been pretty boring and not very interesting to play and pretty annoying to play against a lot of the time. So this is a change that I am very much for and I'm intrigued to see how it works in action. Uh, and I'm curious to see what it's like in game because that really, to me, will kind of tell uh, how she is as a hero and how valuable she is, is how this kind of plays in game. Finally, we had kind of that leak before um, we actually got this article from Doomfist that showed he was moving to the tank role uh, based on like the, I think it was like someone like McGravy was in the game. There was a couple people in the game. I don't remember who it was exactly that leaked it, but we saw like a screenshot. Oh, there's the Florida Mayhem. Or the Overwatch League, the Overwatch League, like, official Facebook or something had leaked it. I don't remember exactly. But we did get the confirmation during the dev uh, live stream as well that Doomvis was being moved to the tank role. We'd had some whisperings about it in the past of, like, the dev team was trying it out, but they hadn't, like, decided fully yet. But here we have confirmation uh, that Doomvis is moving to the tank role. And here is what we hear about him. Doomfist has moved to the tank role and had his kit adjusted, as well as his HP increased, which is good. If you are going to be a tank, I would expect uh, a bit of an HP increase. Rocket Punch had its damage lowered significantly, but receives additional functionality through a new ability introduced in the kit. The new skill is called Power Block, which allows him to absorb damage for a short amount of time, will charge his Rocket Punch's damage temporarily to comparable levels as they are on live today. So... Um, this is another one of those abilities, like I just mentioned with Arisa, that sounds like it's going to be like a Defense Matrix, uh, style ability, where it's, you know, on a cooldown, you can kind of take it, but I like the idea of kind of like, this ability that you use it as Doomfist to absorb energy, and then the immediate response is that you then can go on the offensive and deal more damage. I really like that kind of look, because it's the type of thing where... You can play around it, but it'll keep the game moving. Doomfist seems like a hero in this version of him that is still going to be incredibly aggressive, still going to be a super aggro hero. He's not going to be the same way he is now. He's going to do different damage and, and stuff like that. But I think it's really interesting to see that this ability, right, he can absorb damage, and then he can deal more damage as a result of that. I really like that kind of um, functionality where he, in order to be offensive as Doomfist, you have to be defensive first. You have to help your team, support your team, and then you can go on the offensive and dish out good damage, which you can now. I really love this. This sounds like a really interesting hero and a really interesting change. I love Doomfist. He's one of my favorite heroes to play in Overwatch um, right now. He's just such a fun hero to me, and so this is a really cool change for me, one that I didn't really expect uh, to see um, in this hero's kind of new kit. So I'm intrigued by it. I'm definitely interested to see more of it. Um, and I'm definitely excited to see this one in action as well. But that's not everything. Um, Rising Uppercut and Seismic Slam have been made into one ability, in that Doomfist will uppercut at the start of his ability while slamming down in a much wider area to provide crowd control. And the damage of this ability has also been described as moderate. During the dev livestream, they kind of called this like a Winston leap. Like that's the sim way that like it's similar. So my guess is it's going to be the same thing that would happen if you uppercut Seismic Slam, where you'll go up, and then you'll kind of go out, and you'll slam down. But it'll probably be way more um, fast-moving and fluid, where you kind of go up and then slam down. Um, I don't know if it'll have the same amount of, like, horizontal and vertical movement that the Leap has for Winston, but it does sound kind of interesting. Um, this is really the only thing in this article. This is what this article kind of ends on, right? No other additional heroes have been... Uh, made in the alpha, and more as more information is provided, GG Recon will update things. So to me, this is a really interesting um, article and really interesting changes to these heroes. I'm really intrigued to play uh, all of them. They all sound very interesting and very different. Um, I'm kind of like an aside, this is a very slight one. I'm curious to see how much Doomfist's design is changed for his change to the tank role, because one of the things I think is interesting to see is doomfist has like i look at doomfist as a hero like let's pull like you know we can just pull him up real quick right 
Like, I look at Doomfist, right? And I don't really look at Doomfist and think tank. You know? Like, there's definitely, like, the ability to make him feel like a tank. Like, he definitely is big and is strong and, like, could be a tank. And his artwork makes him look like a tank. But in-game, especially, I don't think he has, like, the tank vibes down in the same way. Especially when he's shirtless. Like, shirtless guy with a big arm doesn't really scream tank to me, you know? Like, definitely, like, offensive and could be a tank. But, like, this, to me is not a tank. So I'm curious to see if they give him like some extra like armor to his design or if he's just going to look the same way he does uh, in Overwatch 1. I mean, he'll have some differences no matter what, but I'm curious to see how they adjust his design to make him look more tank-like. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see what happens as we get closer to um, Overwatch 2. And as hopefully the beta uh, comes out, we have a look at updated designs for everybody. Um that is playable. I know some of the heroes have kind of had weird like portraits that haven't changed a lot, but I'm hoping that by the time the beta rolls around, all of those things will be uh, updated. That's really it though for today. I just kind of wanted to talk about this a little bit, give you my thoughts on this story about the changes to Arisa Doomfist and the abilities for Sojourn. It seems interesting to me, so I wanted to kind of just talk about it a little bit, give you my thoughts on it, and hopefully get back to some more regular videos pretty soon stuff that i you know usually would make so thank you all so much for watching if you enjoyed this video or more overwatch 2 news in the future uh stuff like this please let me know by supporting the video liking subscribing commenting down below all that type of stuff helps out a lot that's gonna be all for me for today hope you all enjoyed hope you're all staying safe and staying healthy and until next time bye bye